It's Wednesday, January the 25th, 2017, and this is your Barbados Today afternoon update. I'm Emmanuel Joseph. Thanks for joining us. Topping the news at this hour, a 37-year-old man was in critical condition late last night after being involved in a two-car smash-up on Woodbourne Road, St. Philip. He is Adrian Goddard of College Savannah in St. John, whose vehicle was involved in the accident with a car driven by 29-year-old Ron Brathwaite of Charnox Christ Church at around a minute to midnight. Police say Brathwaite had to be freed from his vehicle by fire officers. Both men sustained head injuries, but while Goddard was critical, Brathwaite's condition was listed as stable. Meanwhile, a Bayville St. Michael man is at this hour nursing gunshot injuries after being shot in his right thigh during an armed robbery at the junction of Bayview Avenue and Watermill Place at about 10 o'clock last night. 28-year-old MacGyver Hepburn was said by police to have been in the company of other people in the area when a white Toyota motor car pulled up near to them. Law enforcers said three armed men got out of the car and shot Hepburn during the course of the robbery. The Clement Payne movement has formally asked the Fair Trading Commission to carry out a comprehensive investigation into the proposed sale of the Barbados National Terminal Company Limited to the Saul Group of Companies. In an open letter to the FTC and issued today, President of the movement, David Comerchong, wants the Commission to explore all of the possible anti-competition and monopolistic implications of the sale. Comerchong reminded the FTC that under the Fair Competition Act, it possessed the power and is duty-bound to take such action as it considers necessary to prevent mergers which are detrimental to the principles the Commission is mandated to uphold. He said the movement had been formally approached by the new political party, the Barbados Integrity Movement, which has expressed great concern about the planned sale and merger between Saul and BNTCL. A local charity is embarking on a multi-million dollar capital works program along Highway 1 to help government in its pothole patching initiative. The Aaron and Christine Trust Foundation is seeking funding to push forward with the venture. Founder Aaron Trust says the success of the program depends on the level of financial support which his foundation receives. But the first phase on the fundraising is that we need to get, because uh, it is 3.6 million, so uh, even though we have, you know, small businesses may be able to, to find, you know, 10 or 15 or 20,000, mm. unless the, the banks who can afford to, to support in a much larger way mm -hmm. and the large hotels get on board with bigger amounts. Then, um, then it won't be possible. So that's our focus at the moment. And if we get them on board, then we will uh, focus on, uh, on additional donations. In sports now, Usain Bolt has been stripped of one of his nine Olympic gold medals after Jamaican teammate Nesta Carter tested positive for a banned substance. Carter was part of the Jamaican quartet that won the 4x100 meters in Beijing in 2008. His was one of the 454 selected doping samples retested by the International Olympic Committee last year and has been found to contain the banned stimulant methylhexanemine. 30-year-old Bolt completed an unprecedented triple-triple in Rio last summer. There's regional and international news after this short break. Read all about it, read all about it. Get your paper. Only 225. Let's get your paper. Are you again with that stale news from yesterday? I got the barbers today at found my phone and I just get my news for free. What do she? The Barbados today, news you can trust. In regional news now, the ruling People's National Movement in Trinidad and Tobago has done it again. They are the leaders of the Tobago House of Assembly for the fifth consecutive term. After ballots were counted on Monday evening, the party took 10 seats with the progressive Democratic Patriots taking the other two. The PDP party, however, requested a recount of the Goodwood Bell Garden seat as the PNM won by only five votes. Chairs, 
as the People's National Movement took control of the Tobago House of Assembly once more. Party leader and Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley told supporters the campaign was a partnership and although the elections were over, the real work is just about to begin. And the fact that they could have served for four years, come back to the polls and win 10-2, I want to say congratulations to the outgoing team. Calvin Charles, political leader of the Tobago PNM Council and the new area representative for Black Rock Wimspring Garden, echoed the Prime Minister's sentiments. This mandate is to continue to deliver a resilient and stable Tobago with a changed or revolutionized public sector in which the core values of honesty, integrity, industry, efficiency, and maximum productivity are rekindled. Meanwhile, a former THA Chief Secretary Orville London expressed his satisfaction with the results as he told the people that the THA was in the capable hands of a competent and committed team. And on the international scene, Donald Trump has said a big day is planned on national security, including an announcement to build a wall on the border between the U.S. and Mexico. The new Republican president is expected to sign several executive orders on immigration and border security this week. Donald Trump's plan to build a wall is a cornerstone of his immigration policy. During the campaign, he said he wanted it to be an impenetrable physical wall on the southern border. We need the wall. The Border Patrol, ICE, they all want the wall. We stop the drugs. We, sh we shore up the border. He pledged construction would begin on day one. We haven't seen the builders in yet, but some of those close to him say they have an idea of what it'll look like. Donald Trump said the wall would be a thousand miles long, 35 to 40 feet high, and would look as good as a wall is going to look. On the fence. It's not a fence, it's a wall. But there's already a barrier which runs along nearly a third of the border, and that was built after the Secure Fence Act of 2006. We don't know if President Trump will add to what's already there or knock it down and start again. Donald Trump said the wall would cost around $8 billion. Some engineers believe the price tag would be much higher. And having promised Mexico would pay for it, Donald Trump recently announced that the US would initially fund it and recoup the costs from Mexico later. Mexico insists it won't pay whether it's a tax or whether it's a payment, but it will happen. And that's news and sports, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbadistoday.bb. Also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, and like us on Facebook. We are also on Izumi Media in bus terminals, our screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you, as well as Channel 99 on Flow TV and Mix 96.9 FM. I'm Emmanuel Joseph. Have a fantastic day.